Economics is at the forefront of almost every political election. It governs our lives in so many ways. It is used to justify harsh monetary policies that hurt the poor and help the rich. But it also receives a Nobel Prize and helps us get out of recessions. So this begs the question, is economics a science? Or is it an ideological playground where pseudoscience is used to justify ideological decisions? Let's discuss it. So what is economics? Economics is a social science that is trying to determine the most logical and efficient use of resources to meet some goal. This can cover many different things, from production to the banking system, urbanization, government policy, health, environmental issues, and many more. And this can be rather effective. Sure, some economists spend their time trying to predict the stock market and are ultimately beaten by a hamster choosing whether to buy or sell cryptocurrencies depending on which tunnel it runs through. But others develop strategies that hopefully improve people's lives in the most efficient and quickest way possible. But is it a science? Well, first off, what is science? There are various schools of thought about what science is. These schools of thought are epistemological, which means they're related to the theory of knowledge. I will quickly explain some of these so we can see how we can apply these to economics. Rationalism argued that certain truths exist and that the intellect can directly grasp these truths. Think of this as there is some underlying logical structure to the universe and that we can determine this purely through logical statements. This clearly won't relate to economics because it's more focused on fundamental truths rather than human behavior. Empiricism argues that knowledge comes from observation. When people think of scientific method, they're usually thinking of the empiricist approach, that all hypotheses and theories must be tested against observations rather than resting solely on an a priori reasoning. Critical rationalism, which was pioneered by Karl Popper, argues that even if a theory cannot be logically deduced, it might nevertheless be possible to logically falsify it. This is the idea of falsifiability and states that good scientific theory needs to be falsifiable. Originally, many economists adhered to this idea, but over time shifted towards the next school of thought, instrumentalism. Instrumentalism is a methodological view that ideas are useful instruments and that the worth of the idea is based on how effective it is at explaining and predicting phenomena. Instrumentalists argue that the only thing that matters is the predictive power of a theory. That is, even if the theory has incorrect assumptions or statements, if it still predicts the correct outcome, then that's all that matters. This is rather appealing because in many systems, we have to make assumptions or simplifications to be able to make predictions. This says that as long as those simplifications don't change the outcome, it doesn't matter. If we want to know the migration patterns of cows, and to calculate this, we assume that all cows are spheres. Well, provided we get the correct result, it doesn't matter that cows are in fact not spheres. But of course, this necessitates that the predictions are correct. And unfortunately for economics, it hasn't demonstrated a strong predictive power, particularly when compared to hard sciences like physics. But this is a social science. There is a human element, and humans can be difficult to deal with. So it's not that shocking that it struggles to make robust predictions. Professor Robert Schiller, who is a Nobel laureate in economics, wrote on this problem. My belief is that economics is somewhat more vulnerable than the physical sciences to models whose validity will never be clear because of the necessity for approximations is much stronger than in the physical sciences, especially given the models describe people rather than magnetic resonances or fundamental particles. But if economics adheres to instrumentalism, it doesn't need models that are particularly valid. They just need to make good predictions. A professor in economics, John Harvey, says this on the quality of economic models. Mainstream macroeconomic models suck. 
This is not just the opinion of detractors, but for many within the broader confines of neoclassical economics. So unfortunately, many of these models are not accurate. They make bad assumptions and often make bad predictions. Worse still, even when confronted with the fact that their models are making bad predictions, they often don't adopt them for different models. Not very science-like. Another problem is that economics can look like a hard science. There are all these numbers, equations, statistics, and terminology that can confuse the non-initiated. Now all scientists can display the trappings of overselling certain results by increasing the complexity of the explanations. In fact, my own field of physics absolutely has this problem. But economics might be one of the worst fields for this, particularly when the average person is more likely to engage and talk about economic decisions than they are decisions about the latest upgrade to a particle accelerator. Economics needs to serve people, not in a sense that it needs to serve their ideology, which it too often does, but in a sense that it is meant to make people's lives better. But with all these models, sometimes this concept is lost. Efficiency becomes king and must be achieved at all costs. The steady of the economy is more important than the people it is meant to serve. Many of us don't want this, but if we truly allow economics to be a better science, we would let them try these things, even if it hurt us. But maybe it's not worth it. So is economics a science? Yes, in principle, but it is clear that not all economists are scientists. It is also clear that economics is not a hard science. It needs to be treated like a social science. Not meaning that social sciences are worse by any means, but they have different metrics to measure the quality of their research. Not everything requires the rigor of particle physics, and we shouldn't expect as much. This being said, we should be critical of economic policy. After all, it affects us all. There are many problems in science. One is how we completely undervalue the next generation of scientists. Check out this video to find out more. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.